Thank you for tuning in to the Beyond Corona Film Festival interviews. This is Sebastian Bobic. I think you're joining us from Austria. Yes, exactly. And uh, how is it going over there? Uh, you know, it's getting worse. It has been better, but... <laughs> oh, really? With the coronavirus? It's, yeah, I think it's the same as in everywhere in the world. It's up and down. And right now it's, it's more of a down, but I hope it's going to be an up again soon. Okay. Well, thank you for submitting your film, Oceans. Oh, thank um, you for showing it. Oh, of course. Now, your film seems to be a little experimental. Um, could you tell us what you were thinking when you made the film Oceans and maybe your views on global warming or if it has anything to do with um, sustainability or if it's just a meditative experience? Um, that's a good question. Um, where do I start? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I guess I guess you could call it an, an experimental film. Um, I, I think I was watching a lot of that. I, I was kind of discovering for myself some of the very classical experimental filmmakers, lots of Americans, uh, Brackage, Mika's, stuff like that. And at the same time, I was watching a lot of old, like very old cinema, like the, the Lumieres. Um, films like that. And I became kind of very, I guess, uh, interested in the idea if I could make a film that is truly only possible as a filmic experience. And I think I succeeded because um, I don't think that the film I did could exist in any other medium. Or maybe it could, but it wouldn't, it would take a lot away. I feel, I feel like it's a very filmic, uh, landscape experience in the end. I noticed um, a few IMDb credits um, for like no. an assistant director or something, second assistant director. And so have you been working your way up into film, like trying to make your own films? I made a, a digital filmmaking diploma at a, a like media school basically here in Vienna. And I was very interested in that kind of model and lately i've been um somewhat moving away from the idea of working even in in the industry which i think is maybe why i find myself so drawn to all these uh experimental filmmakers from the 1960s or even later as well but especially those right now because i um i must say i i did a couple of short films that were narrative and okay with with a little set and i always mostly directed already. I, I was very confident that that's what I wanted to do. And it seems that that confidence was big enough for other people to follow me for a bit, which is nice. But uh, I realized that for me personally, that's not the way I want to make films as a, um, it, it's a big mix of the stress, the organization. And to me personally, uh, the idea of writing a script and basically perfectly pre-planning a movie, which is the way most of them are made, I suppose. And then for weeks and months, trying to do nothing else but to um, already to, to just perfectly put this pre-planned, pre-modeled thing on screen. Um, I guess it, it felt a bit lifeless to me. So I was wondering, is, does this mean I'm going into nonfiction now and trying documentary stuff, which dry documentary was never my thing entirely either. I don't really watch a lot of documentaries. It's changed a bit recently, but in general, it wasn't ever my focus. And so this, this middle thing came along of, I started discovering essay filmmaking and all these alternative, I guess, ways of making films that are more linked to maybe everyday life, people that film as writers write or stuff like that. And I became very, uh, smitten by that idea, I suppose. So that's, um, so that's the way I'm trying to make movies. It's less working on sets, et cetera, and really just making my own things, which of course might also mean I'm not really ever gonna make any money with the making of my films, but I have come to somewhat accept that idea. Right, so it's like you tried the grander scheme of filmmaking and you decided it's not for you. Do you find it's more freeing and or you have more freedom to make your own things on projects 
For me, definitely. I still have lots of contact to people who are really getting a foot into the industry or already halfway in it. And I, I do think it's a very uh, individual thing. I don't think that becoming an experimental filmmaker necessarily means that people feel freer. I know a lot of people that are, are very happy with working in a, in a rather industrial way of filmmaking. But for me personally, I have found that I, I don't really want to do it or I'm much happier this way. Exactly. Because sometimes the studio system can be constricting. So it works for other people, but for you, you're doing your own thing. And it seems, it seems like, you know, as long as you attain happiness doing your own thing, that seems to be the most important thing. Any closing comments or uh, hopes for future projects? I do have something, I, I suppose. Okay. Uh, I thought it was very nice when you sent me that first email um, when, we, when we started our, our conversation. Um, you, you wrote, I think, I remember quite vividly, um, you wrote, thank you for caring about cinema or something like that, which yeah. I thought was very touching. And I tried to formulate a response, but I didn't really know what to say. But I do think that uh, as much as filmmakers might have to be thanked, um, maybe you programmers are way more important. Uh, oh, no. no. Um, so I think in regard to cinema, I just find, especially if uh, short film, uh, filmmakers who are making short films, um, yeah. it's a level of dedication and you might not be receiving um, all the accolades, like all the filmmakers who have submitted, they're not Christopher Nolan yet. There's that potential to maybe one day, you know, be a Stan Brackage or, you know, Jordan Belson or somebody like that. Um, even if you're working like mm -hmm. um, in experimental films, but it, it can be like a whole sacrifice to take uh, a part of your life and dedicate it to cinema and making films, uh, not knowing, you know, where it's going to go, but taking that chance. So that's yeah. an important thing, like making your films and getting it out there. So. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And you have to, yeah, especially if you make shorts, they're not commercial products. You have to, you have to care and just believe in it beyond any idea of a monetary gain or any other. And you just really have to love it. But I, yeah, also just thanks to you for, you know, putting a festival like this on its feet. Because, I mean, with, with, with all this international global crisis happening right now, it's, it's hard to see films anyway, especially I really prefer watching films in a cinema. But oh. on the other hand, if things like this can come out of it, where, where global communities manage to gather online to just watch some films, um, and that makes it all worth it, I think, for filmmakers too. I, I personally can at least just say that money is nice, of course, and it, it, it would be fantastic to make money with film someday but in the end i think if you make films you only want them to be seen somehow um so if you're already being seen by anyone i mean that's that's probably the most you can ask for in some ways it's right. the most or at least it's the most fulfilling of all these things if, if someone says hey i like that or hey that touched me and i've been lucky to have instances of people coming up to me or writing me and saying this was good this was somehow this changed something even if just for a day that's great great well thank you for joining us sebastian and i look forward to seeing your films in the future oh thank you and i look forward to seeing all the other films in the festival i'm very curious and excited